Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Last week we showed you some highlights from the 2022 American Mule and Bluegrass Festival in Shelbyville, Tennessee. This week we'll spend some time on the festival's two-day wagon train and meet a couple of the folks driving their teams. How long have you been fooling with the mule? Since 2005, I got my first mule and I've never looked back. Um, he was a Mustang mule and I did all kinds of crazy stuff out of patrol, uh, Washington, D.C., Fourth of July parade. I, yeah, I just love them. They just are so reliable. You know, you got to work with them, you got to get in bonded with them, but uh, I just. And these two boys right here, they were pretty green when I first got them. And that was three years ago. And now they're just really doing well. Getting real confident about what I'm going to do to them and confident what I'm going to do for them. So we're about where we want to be and I'm just thankful. So. Did you fool around with horses before you got with the mules? Yeah, I was barrel racing when I was five. And I'm 68 years old now. and. Did endurance, did hunter jumper stuff, did Grand Prix in college, equestrian team, did all that stuff. So quarter horses, Arabians? Uh, more running type quarter horses, okay. Arabians and endurance, right. uh, half Arabians. And yeah, just did a lot of variety, a lot of crossbred horses that I just learned from. And some little rank horses that taught me some of my most important lessons. And so I think I've had a fairly well-rounded education in the equine world, so. Doing a lot of athletic events, um, as opposed to like performance shows, that kind of thing, it sounds like, or well, you did both. I did show jumping in college. I was on the equestrian team in college, and that was in 1972. And then uh, did fox hunting. You know, I went to college in Virginia, did fox hunting, and did some steeplechase, and uh, tried polo. That was, wow. that was just a hoot. And uh, so yeah, just anything that comes along that I think would be new and different and part of my education, I jump on it. I, I don't say no real well. <laughs> it, sounds, I mean, that's, it sounds like you don't have a shortage of courage. That's, a lot of that stuff would frighten people. It does. And uh, I did have an accident about two years ago now we, me and my team in this wagon, as a matter of fact, pretty much got pushed off uh, a mountain. And I had to jump that way, and my mules in the wagon went that way. And doggone it, we ended up at the bottom of the thing, the gully. My mules were side by side. And this wagon stood the test of time, boy. And a tree landed right between the second and third bow, wow. and nothing broke. Oh my. And the fellers, the outriders, I was trying to come down because it was so steep, and they said, yeah, ma'am, yeah. stay up there. And they came down, and my boys stood up, took them on out, hitched them back up, got a tractor, pulled my, my wagon out, hooked it back up, drove it up to the top of the hill again. I st stepped on up. We went another three hours. It fine. was fabulous. Wow. It was, and I got to camp and checked every inch of them, every inch of my wagon. It was just a miracle. And I did say, Lord, help me. <laughs> <laughs> so we have those kind of things, too. And you know, different things that come along and you learn to roll and you learn how to, you know, jump off correctly. And, you know, there's certain things you, you learn if you get a chance. So I, I'm older than most of the people that I ride with, but if I come off, you know, it's not the first time and I kind of know how to roll and I hopefully land on something that's a little softer than this road right here. But I don't really worry about that. I can't live my life that way. I've got to go out and enjoy every day. Nobody's promised tomorrow, as they say. And this is what does it for me. 
this is what makes my life complete. So I just plan to do it as long as I possibly can and go to as many new places. You know, at, at my age and my level that I've done, I'm still looking for new stuff to do. It's something that I think if people would give it a chance or come along with me, they would get hooked. Because if you feel this little bit of a rock here in the wagon, oh, so relaxing. And I've seen people fall asleep driving their mules and that's delightful because it is relaxing. So, yeah, and we have some, I ride with some fellers that are in their mid to late 80s. Sure. And uh, I rode out in Fort Worth on a wagon train last year and there was a 92 year old who does all his own work. And I think that really adds to the longevity. It's kind of like the queen you know, she was in her horses until she was in her mid-90s, right. you know, and, and God love her, she just passed. And, right. you know, it, it, it adds to your, the fact that you have to do your, your work, you have to use your muscles, you have to lift weight. I think it's just good for you. It's good for your body and it's good for your mind. So what better thing to be involved with, especially as you're getting older, and you just don't let that fear creep in. You know, it, it's... It's out there, but just don't, just say, no, uh, don't come my way. We've been publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar for over 40 years. Our customers have come to expect beautiful and interesting photographs of draft horses printed on high quality paper, wire-o bound so they lay flat on the wall. Large date squares make it easy to jot down appointments or events, and every grid page includes a bonus photo. We've included photos of all the major American draft horse breeds working in the woods and farm fields, as well as performing for appreciative crowds. They cost just $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for just $32. You can get your calendar by calling 1-877-647-2452 or visiting our website at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 1-877-647-2452 or www.ruralheritage.com. Do you ride either of these? I do. Uh -huh. They ride, they pack, they drive. That's the bells on their tails. That's significant as to what you can do with these guys. And uh, this fella on the left, Tom, he, we put big old metal uh, wagon wheels all over him and just clanging and carrying on and uh, drove him, uh, packed him off of the other mule and just just made as much racket as we could. And Ted, the same thing, he packs mighty fine. So uh, I like to do that. I like to go by myself up in the mountains and just pack in and set up and just be by myself with my guys. I, I don't feel lonely when I'm with them. So it works out really well. And then driving, of course, they're coming along nicely in that. And so yeah, they're well-rounded doing what mules should do. Did you drive horses before? No, I never had the, the urge. Uh, I'd play around with it with a Shetland pony and a cart. Okay. Uh, I did some of that when I was a kid. Um, and that was fine. I mean, it, it, you kind of get in there, you just kind of do it. But this had, requires a little more finesse about it. And, you know, I do a lot of, of training in serpentines and a lot of backs and things that keep them sharp. And if I get myself in a jam, it gives me some tools to go to to get out of the jam. So that's a pretty, pretty good thing to keep going with. And just, you know, you don't want to spoil these guys. You know, you want them to stay mules and, you know, be obedient, you know, 99% of the time if you can get that much, you know, thank the Lord. But, and these guys are, they really have come quite a ways. Was it difficult adjusting from the psychology of a horse to the psychology of a mule or not? I think the first mule I had did that for me the best. He was Mustang mule and he was a head and healing mule. And he was the type that wouldn't get overly upset about anything, but he also wouldn't get overly excited about anything. He wasn't a happy soul. But he was a good work animal and he taught me a lot as far as how to handle precisely. Uh, tell them what you want them to do. You know, don't play around. 
and that was great. And he was uh, got to the point that if I, like I'm thinking of one wagon train I was on with him, and I got just deathly ill, and I was in my trailer, and I had him picketed right outside the door of my trailer, and he would stand with his head in my trailer and would forbid anyone to come in my trailer. He just said, nope, you're not going in there. She's fine, I've got her. And I was just, wow. I was in love at that point. Yeah. So um, just that kind of stuff. And Ted, this one on the right, he's starting to show that. Uh, just keeping my other mules off of me when we're walking to the pasture and putting his nose on my back, you know, making sure that he's the one with me. Just stuff like that, just, just oh. It gets to my heart, it really uh -huh. does, so. Hmm. You enjoy wagon trains, which is kind of a community event. Yes. You enjoy going off by yourself as well. Yes. You get fulfillment from both of those things. Yes, yes, and this, because a lot of, a high percentage of wagon trains are mules, and I don't know, I just click with mule people. I click with them. The, and this, everybody is watching out for everybody else. And everybody is here to enjoy the outdoors, nature, our animals. There's not that competition. There's not that got to be better, better, better than somebody. There's none of that. We're just out here for the same reason. And I just love that. And I know in the real world back in Jacksonville, sometimes I'll just kind of get, get in a funk and my husband will say, you need to go riding. And I said, I'm going. So, and that's when I go out in the woods by myself. Sometimes I just got to go out there and, you know, and just commune with nature and, and be with my, my mount. I can picture people saying that it would be scary for a man to go out by himself out into the woods and even doubly so for a woman to be by herself. Is that, do you, do you, do you hear people talking like that to you? All the time. Yeah. They think I'm a lunatic. Uh, and I would, with my, the mule I had, I would go on a full moon on the beach. And we, every full moon, every month, we'd go on the beach, just me and my mule. And people would be walking the opposite direction and if they got close enough, my mule, my Mustang mule, would right. pin his ears back and just dare them to come any closer. There are as many kinds of mules as there are horses. True. That's who the mama is, and that's right. what you can get. You can work for something. And these are Belgian mules. And at home, I have a fox trotter mule that I do endurance races with. She's fast, and she's smooth, and she loves it. She loves going fast, but has very soft mouth. And we did uh, 25 miles in two hours and 10 minutes. She was flying. Wow. And uh, very reliable. And then she's the one that I rode across the state of Michigan last month. That was 240 miles. And she just loves it. Just loves it. And so I'm lucky to have her in my life. And then I have my little 14 nothing mule that I did obstacle challenges with and did mountain patrol with. and and. Uh, She's sweet. She's the one that I would trust my two-year-old grandbaby to lead around. Okay. She's just that reliable right. soul. So it's good to have variety and, and be able to do different things with different animals I have. It's, it's a real treat. I ride that mule there. And this mule is a little hard for her to get on. It's a little too tall. Okay. Uh, we had to put it off in a ditch. We got riding permits at the rural village in Elkmont, Alabama. It's a government owned property, but people live there, they own, they own this is a big subdivision, but they got a lot of land there farming and they sell permits. And there where we park, it's a little ditch. I put them off in the ditch and she gets up her own. That works good. But I bought a new little mule the other day. Uh, it's 14 hands, it'd be easier for her to get on, but I got to get him bulletproof before I put her on, because she ain't yeah. no rider. I mean, she, she rides, sure. she just enjoys riding. She right, don't right. know nothing about, you know, cowboying up or nothing. She just right. rides. Right, right. And that's all right. That's all I want her to do. Where did you get these two from? Did you buy them as a team, or did you put them no, together? No, sir. I bought that mule right there as a two-year-old 
at the last sale that Columbia, Tennessee had before the stockyard burnt. Okay. And I believe she's 20 year old. That's how long I've had her. And I bought this mule in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, three of this fourth year I've had her, I guess. And uh, she's a real, she's a real mule. I mean, that there's a real mule too. I, I don't have no problem out of them kicking. I'd crawl right under them, right through yep. there right now. Yep. Right under their legs, all the way out to the side, and they wouldn't look. They don't booger. They don't booger at nothing on the road. Or... Yeah. Boy, that's priceless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So as a two-year-old, was it already pretty well broke? No, it or... was just a coat, big coat. So you, you did work? I, well, I had a friend by the name of Mark Dixon. Mark's a real hand at training horses and stuff. And he trained, he broke that mule to ride for me. I, she wasn't no trouble to break the drive. I hooked her up and uh, had had a truck behind me, somebody driving it. And I made a figure eight out there in a, in a lot where I live. And I hollered, stop. And I went a four mile loop and never didn't meet a car. So I just kept going. and. And it was a little narrow bridge right up above my house on the pretty main road there. And here come a truck off of that hill about 70 miles an hour. And he never did check up and she just done her head like that and just kept on walking. Wow. And I, she ain't been no trouble since. I, we on them wagon trains to Mule Day, I tell them people, I, I got them taught the ground tie. I just throw the rain, this rope down on the ground, you know, and they said, does that work, Thompson? I said, well, it has so far. <laughs> but me and Coy, we helped one another going to Mule Day. Okay. He uh, goes to himself, Columbia, yeah. yeah, yeah. He goes, but comes by himself, and my wife's retired now. She's going with me, but I used, me and him used to ride, and then we'd help one another, you know, Stand behind the, in front of the mules while you go to the bathroom, take time about and eat. We just tie up. I tied to the back of his wagon. I said, if he don't run off, we'll be all right. <laughs> Step up. So. Thank you. <laughs> we weren't watching. These things ain't been hooked up since mule day. <laughs> no, I take that back. Oh, I take that back. And, and, uh, June, I carried them to the sheriff's arena there in Athens and all uh, special needs people. Yeah. These mules get behind so far, I don't say nothing to them. They catch up on them. <laughs> they've been on wagon train enough, they know to do that. They work pretty good together. They work good together. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. 
That's 1-877-647-2452. So did you grow up with mules? No, sir. You just got started with them? I got started with them in 95. I was partners in the stockyard down at Elgin Crossroads going towards Florence, Alabama. And I knew everybody around that fool with horses and he was asking me to buy my kids a rope horse and I, I don't want no short ears. Ain't no short ears gonna be on my farm. Hay burner. Hay burner. Hay burner. What I call them, hay burners. I bought him a rope horse and then the, I bought my youngest son a little old mule down there at the sale. They'd have a horse sale down there occasionally and a little old blue colored mule come out of Kentucky. And uh, I bought that thing for him and he was just, a, I don't know, 11, 12 year old, I guess, younger. And, and he loved that mule. He would ride it, we'd go to Shelbyville and he'd ride them little girls on the back with him. And then uh, Danny Robinson, he run the store and he told me, he said, man, we used to coon hunt on them things in Louisiana. So I got rid of my horses and and uh, got got some mules to ride. And then uh, I bought a pair in in the fall of '98. Up there at Dixon, a little pair of 14 hand sorrel mules and a little wagon didn't have no top on it. <laughs> Just had a bench seat. And we stayed in a stock trailer at night. We went from Federal to Columbia. It come with thunderstorm, lightning, <laughs> wind blowing in on us because the stock trailer wasn't completely enclosed. Right. And uh, I got behind some of Coy's buddies with the Middle Tennessee mule skinners and one of them had the back of stick He'd reach out and hit them road signs when we was going down the road. My little mules, they'd pat the ground, want to run off. Yep. And they'd, they'd say, oh, I'm sorry, Alabama. I forgot about you being back there. <laughs> then they'd do it again. I said, y'all keep it up. The time we get to Columbia, we'll have them broke. And we was going up through there to the park mule day park. And they hit one of them signs and them little mules never did pick the ears up. They just kept on walking. Yep. <laughs> but I've met a lot of nice people wagon riding. You know, the majority of them is good folks. And, uh, and of course, just like anything else, you run into a few of them. It's not, not too good. Not too good. You yeah. do that in anything, it don't matter what it is, for you right. playing basketball or whatever. It just right. But it's peaceful riding down the road in a wagon like this, hearing that cluck, cluck, cluck. Uh, and when you uh, get in at night, you know, sit around and talk. It's, uh, I met a lot of nice folks. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.